Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. In today's video, I wanted to discuss some topical news. In case you've not heard, our nation is currently battling a global pandemic. This has caused a lot of weirdness, and so I wanted to take a moment to discuss several things. Of course, the first thing I have to mention is the nationwide run on essential products that's occurred. It started with toilet paper, of all things, and quickly moved to include hand sanitizers, bleach, masks, gloves, and canned goods. I get it. People are scared, and it causes shifts in buying patterns. You want to ensure that you have enough to take care of yourself and your family. Luckily, things are starting to calm down on that front for now. However, it's now moved on, as could have been predicted, to ammunition and firearms. There's been several ammunition and firearm panic buying periods in the past few decades, so those of us in the gun world are, are kind of used to it. In fact, with it being an election year, it was kind of bound to happen anyway. But this time it is a little different. The percentage of new first-time firearms buyers is much higher this time around. It seems that the real threat of societal unrest at a national scale has caused a lot of people, many whom may not have been as friendly to the Second Amendment previously, to recheck their thinking. Hearing reports that law enforcement will in fact not be responding to all incidents, and knowing that our normal state and local first responder assets are being stretched thin has made a lot of people realize that they are, in fact, the first response to any situation themselves. It changes your thinking. To all of these people, I want to say welcome to the firearms world. If you are one of these first-time owners, please get some real-world education and training on your purchase. What you see in the movies is nothing like real life, and just having a gun does you no good if you don't know how to use it. In fact, it will likely have the opposite effect. Most people don't know how to use a circular saw the first time they pick one up, and those are simple compared to how a firearm functions. And unlike a saw, where you're only likely to hurt yourself if you have a mishap, firearms have much more damage potential if things go wrong. While in-person instruction is the best way to learn, with the current shelter-in-place scenario, it might not be possible. There is a lot of good content on Firearms Basic on YouTube, on my channel and many others, and you should be able to find some good information on just about any firearm that you may have. Once you learn about how it works, get some practical real-world range time with it to become proficient. You don't need to become a top-shot marksman, but you should be able to reliably load, unload, and operate your firearm and be able to shoot it with some degree of control. Moving back to the run on ammunition, unlike toilet paper, ammunition may be limited for some time. With so many new buyers, massive buying in certain states in the recent several months due to proposed restrictions, it being an election year, and now the effect of the coronavirus itself on people's buying habits, I'm foreseeing things being thin for some time. I'm not saying to panic, just be aware that what you use might not be able to be replaced as easily as in the past for a while. Supply and demand in both finished product, components, and raw materials will result in costs going up as well. Just something to keep in mind. The final thing I want to mention is one that honestly makes me a little angry. Even though there's a lot going on, and the news cycle is dominated by the coronavirus and everything about it, make sure that you pay attention to your legislatures at the local, state, and national levels. Make no mistake, the opponents of our Second Amendment rights have not lost sight on their goal of eliminating our rights. At the state and city level, there's been several attempts by overzealous Second Amendment opponents to enact emergency powers provisions that could be used to reduce or eliminate gun sales. Think that some of them wouldn't push for confiscation? Well, it's happened in the past. Remember the gun confiscations in the wake of Hurricane Katrina? If it's happened in the past, if you don't keep an eye out for it, it can happen again. At the federal level, I submit to you H.R. 5717, a sweeping anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment, piece of garbage bill that's winding its way through the sewer. Originally submitted for consideration on January 30th, it's been working its way through various committees and just recently on March 10th, after the coronavirus hit, was referred to the subcommittee on crime, terrorism, and homeland security, and even picked up another Democrat co-sponsor at the same time. Currently it has 18 sponsors, all Democrats, and I've listed them behind me. This bill seeks to require a federal license before you can own a firearm or ammunition, create a firearm registry, raise the minimum age for all firearms ownership to 21, institute red flag laws, impose 30 to 50 percent taxes on guns and ammunition, as well as ban on current standard capacity magazines, and as you could expect, a ban on almost all commonly available semi-automatic rifles 
which are being labeled erroneously as assault weapons. This includes, of course, all AKs, ARs, and many, many more. Even in this time of national distress, there are those that will seek to disarm us. So make sure you stay vigilant and don't let the current situation allow our rights to be taken away. If you want to find out all the details on this horrible legislation, you can go to congress.gov and just look up H.R. 5717. Or you can just do a Google search for H.R. 5717 and many links will come up that will take you to congress.gov and you can read all the details yourself. It's over 95 pages, so there's an awful lot there to read. I hope that this information is of value, and if you like the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.